Hey guys, Eileen Vick here for Teaching Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. It is, whoops, <laughs> it is Thursday, April 18th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and I am live. It is week 16 of 2024 and in my neck of the woods it is currently 74 degrees with a high of 83 and a low of 62. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my broadcast. I'm here for the next three hours for coloring, companionship, chat, friendship, giggles, and laughs. And of course, the what, the how, and the why of adult coloring. Welcome to my YouTube peeps who come in and chat with me. That is always fun. Welcome to my YouTube peeps who watch this broadcast after the fact. And welcome to my Facebook peeps who see this broadcast after the fact when I download it into my group Teaching Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. All right. So, we've got the, du uh, the duet on tap, and the duet, for anybody that's new, is an image that I supply out of one of my books. I give it to you guys for free in my group. And that way you guys can color with me, which of course is the idea. So I encourage you to pace me. In other words, don't jump ahead because you don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. And it's a really great learning tool. All right. <clears throat> the next project, and also I always do two projects. So I'm going to be working on the Disney Thomas Kincaid. And the image I'm going to be working on, all right, my book fell open to it last time, so of course this time it doesn't. <laughs> uh, Oh, there it is. This is the image we're going to be working on. Now, I misspoke the other day, yesterday. We were talking about um, comparing the side we're coloring on and the image. This image is done in, I don't know if it's watercolor or oil, oils. But the point being is that you will never ever get the exact same look on the image you're coloring against the image that's the guide. And you should be able to tell that right off because this is just an outline of this image. So I want you guys to get over being disappointed if they don't look exactly the same. All right. So we're going to be starting this little guy here. There's some techniques that I want to show you. Let's see. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday to one and all. Says Maggie, Mamie's. 
that's my uh, Al Jolson. Oh, Julie, that's great. Hello, Thomas. Hello, say Chris. Say Chris. All right. Chris, how did you find my group? Now, there are two of these books. One is the uh, Thomas Kincaid, it just says Dreams Collection. I've colored out of that one as well. I think this was the last one that I did out of it. It's a really nice little book. Here's Alice in Wonderland. So the book I'm working out of is this one, not this one. Mamie, I sent you both just in case the links, just in case that you're interested. All right. So let me get my paper towel. And my scrap page. So, Julie, you've got the book? Guys, don't forget to hit that like button. That's the only thing I ask you for all the work that I do for you and the coloring. Push that like button for me. Okay. So last night, I worked on the eyes as well as the hair. So now we've got some greenery here. Let me get my paper towel. Now, this piece here, I was asked to do in gel pen. So basically, the top of this area here was done in gel pen. Darlene Dutch asked me to do that, so I was glad to do that. So I'm going to use now, I'm going to start working on this greenery on the outside. And I'm going to use pencil because I want that difference between the gel pen and the pencil look. Oh, Mamie, you're welcome. Okay, so here's the green that I'm using. Oh, this happens to be a Calore, if you have that brand pencil, 138, mint green. I know a number of you bought the, the um, Calore set. I absolutely love it. All right.
so I'm just taking my pencil and I'm doing like a halo effect on this. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking my pencil here and I'm just, what's the word I want? I guess scribbling it in. Look how pretty that looks. Isn't that pretty? So guys, how are you doing today? Win, lose, or draw? I'm going to say draw. Maggie says draw. Now, don't forget to put your paper towel underneath your hand. Keeps the pages reasonably clean. Mamie, draw. Okay, good. Oh, how pretty is that? Okay. Oh, Thomas Wynn. Cool, what happened? Okay, now I'm going to use a red and I'm going to add Just a little bit of red in there.
And what that's going to do is it's going to make it look like there are some little berries in there. So nothing much. We had my cousin who we babysit on Thursdays and I cleaned, cleaned out your pencil sharpener. So all in all a good day. Alright, good. Okay. Let me pop over to the other side. Check out how those look like little berries. Isn't that cool? Now, be sure to get in between your leaves right here. Put a couple of red here, a little bit of red. Okay, and then I'm going to take that same red. Oh, your mom's mother that passed away, she really liked Thomas Kincaid. I'm going to take that same red. And I'm going to make specific circles with it. So that that definitely looks like berries.
Oh, your mother-in-law did too. She had two large prints, which are now with your father-in-law. Okay. Says Maggie. Now I'm going to carry these red berries down on my other leaves here. And then I'm going to pop over to the other side and we'll do the same thing. Now, if you want to go ahead and add an additional berry or two, Go ahead and do that, finesse your piece. All right, there's Linda. The three amigos are here. Uno, dos, tres. Hello, Linda. Hello, Michelle. Okay. Hello, Wally. All right. Now, we've got some green greenery down here. The greenery down at the bottom I'm going to do with gel pen. And the reason that I'm doing that is because it, it gives us a nice little balance with what's on top of her head. Check it out.
Who's coloring this with me tonight? And if you're not coloring this, what are you coloring? Maggie, you're coloring with me. Linda, Tom just did a BRB. LSP, hello. Alright, now don't get too crazy with your green here because we've got a couple flowers. We've got one right here. And check out now how we're leaving these additional petals. Like I said, don't go too crazy with your green. Hey, Sarah. Alright, let's pop over to this other side. And look how pretty that's coming out. Now, again, these are with my gel pens. Darlene ought to be real happy with us. Right, Darlene? <laughs> And look how the red and the green look really cool. LSP, how are you doing this evening? Okay, let's get this tangle of leaves done at the bottom. Now, again, be careful what you're coloring. We don't want to wipe out this little flower here.
All right. Let me pull out. So, Sarah, you got a bingo prize, huh? Okay, so this is what Sarah won. Blippy, get curious. Sarah, what's that book about? So Sarah got this book at a at a bingo. How cool is that? Hey, Brittany. Guys, what do you think of Sarah's bingo prize? Oh, it's an activity book. That's cool. All right, now we've got a leaf cut off right here. So I'm going to go ahead and shape that with my pen. So, Sarah, are you going to work your way through it and do the activities? Hello, kitty. So not tonight, but tomorrow and next week. There you go. All right. Now I'm going to work my flowers. In purples and pinks hopefully my purple gel pen won't give out on me <laughs> Brittany how are you doing
Now, you need to be careful. that we don't wipe out the individual petals. And periodically take your gel pen and wipe it off on your paper towel. Oh, Sarah, you said during tomorrow you'll be working on Blippi? All right. Okay. Now, again, you can go ahead and extend your petal a little bit over your border. Sarah, you're too tired to color? Okay. Okay, now I'm going to pop over here on the other side. And do my flower over there as well. Now, you know I'm going to do more with this, right? I'm not just going to leave a blob of purple. Now, just in case you're wondering, I can still see the lines underneath of my flower. And also keep in mind that gel pens are a whole different look. Than your pencils. Sometimes they end up looking, okay Thomas, thank you. Sometimes they end up looking a little scratchy and that's fine.
Okay. Let's take a look at this. Isn't that pretty? Now, take advantage of the scratchiness on your gel pen that when you color your petals, you color your petals in the direction that they're hanging. Okay. Now let's get a little detail in here. Okay, I'm going to come in with a nice dark green pencil and I'm going to start to shade these leaves. Check it out. So, Thomas, are you married? No, you're not married. I thought you mentioned a wife earlier, but then I remember that you're ready for dating. Okay, now notice how I'm adding just a little bit of this extra green. On top of our leaves. And I'm sticking towards the outside. Check it out. And we're just adding a little swish of color. You don't want to completely obliterate that gel pen that you put in.
All right, let's take a look at this. Yeah, I, I had forgotten that you said that you weren't married now. You live with your mom and your German Shepherd. Yep. Cool. Okay, let's go to these on the other side. Notice just how I'm adding a little bit of color on the edge. And you still want to blend out that color. You don't want streaks on your leaves. What does that mean to blend out? You get lighter and lighter. Now, remember, I'm up close with this. That's what I always do. Okay, Mamie, thank you. So you may not be able to see the exact effect, but when I pull out, you'll see it. Any questions about what I'm doing? Now, since this is a larger leaf, I'm just going to go ahead and do the veins. Oh, is that pretty? All right, let me pull out. What do you think? Okay, kitty, thank you. Too pretty. Okay. Now I'm going to come up on the leaves here. And using that same green, I'm going to start 
what? Shading and shadowing. Shading is shaping, right? Shadowing is defining. And notice how I'm emphasizing the edges of the leaves. So that we start getting that dimensional look. See how they're starting to look layered? Okay, Mamie, thank you. Look how pretty that looks, guys. And notice how shading underneath this leaf here makes that look dimensional and I'm also going to do a little bit of shadowing underneath the flower so the flower is laying on top of the leaf which is laying on top of a second leaf Anybody have any questions about that? All right, let's move over to this flower here. Anybody have any questions about what I'm doing? Okay, let's move up to these leaves right here. When I'm coloring right close to the rows, I'm shadowing. And when I come out, it becomes a shading. Now, don't get hung up on those two terms.
Well, Brittany, if you put a good layer of gel pen on the paper, make sure that your pens are flowing well. That can be part of the problem. And also, the way that you get rid of that streakiness is you can take a colored pencil that's <coughs> similar to the color that you are using and gently go over the top. Remember, gel pens give a certain look. So if you're coloring a project, you need to decide whether you're gonna use gel pens or pencils. For example, if you look at this rose, the streakiness of the gel pen makes it look really cool. And as Maggie just mentioned, she colors in small circles. Exactly. And the other thing is, is don't color quickly with them. You've got to slow down when you use gel pens. Okay, let's move over to this right-hand side. Brittany, your biggest thing is going to be slowing down. You cannot go fast with gel pens. Brittany, look how smooth I got these leaves using the gel pens. I just went really slow. Remember guys, when you use a different medium to color, for example, using gel pens on this piece is giving this a whole different look. Than what it would have been with colored pencils. That's the point. It depends what kind of look you want. Do you want a gel pen look? Do you want a pencil look? Quite honestly, I like the scratchiness of the gel pen.
Okay, notice how I'm shadowing underneath this rose. And then I'm blending out that color. Brittany, does that answer your question? Okay, let me pull out. So what do you think so far? Okay. Let's go ahead and start working <clears throat> on the shirt or blouse. Now, I started up with a gold on the collar. And again, guys, when I ask you what you think, I'm asking you from your standpoint of coloring this. How do you feel about the way this project is coming that you're doing with me? Hello, Stacy May. <laughs> okay, so I'm using a goldish brown. This is actually called the Bone Brown, which is neither here nor there. It's a brut funner. Now, I want you to notice that I'm running along this inside edge, and that's leaving a little outer edge right here. And that's an excellent point from Thomas. It's, it's let, the, let the pencil do the work. Let the pen do the work. And remember, you're going to get a whole different look with gel pen. Brittany, does that help you?
Oh, how pretty is this gold? Dark around the edge. Lighter as we come inward. And that yellow and orange that I did before, that highlights this right there. Let's look at both sides of the collar. And don't forget, I'm here to answer questions. If you have questions, if you're new, don't hesitate to say hello, first of all. I don't bite. I really don't. Now, check out how this gold on the outside, again, slightly darker on that edge, and that gives us a nice sheen on the collar. And this is where I come in with a very dark brown. And I'm just going to run it along that edge. Now, look how our left collar, our left, her right, has that extra little kick because I put that very dark edging on it. Right on the edge. And then I'll come down a little bit here. In that corner. Maggie, when was the last time I bit somebody? Let's pull this out. All right. 
right, let me grab some water here. Well, I've invited people to say hello because I don't bite, but you said you're not sure when I last bit somebody. <laughs> Okay, water-based marker. Oh, years ago. Yeah, I think you're right. I've given it up. I don't want to scare, only during a full moon. All right, guys, quit telling my secrets. Either only during a full moon or during a solar eclipse. <laughs> When's the next solar eclipse? About, what, 30 years from now? Okay. Red marker. Now I'm going to backtrack a little bit and I'm going to take my gold pencil and color in this little pendant thingy. And then I'm going to take my red marker and I'm going to put some dots on here. Now, notice how I'm putting a half circle right next to that fold in the material. That'll give you a more realistic look.
and I want you to notice that the dots look a little bit lighter than the red that I used on the frill. That's because that frill was what? Black ink. And this I'm just putting on straight paper. Oh, kitty, thank you. Now, when we get into these folds here, this is where we want to do, like I said, our partial circle. Okay, hold on, guys. All right, let me pull out. Everybody see how, because I'm doing these half dots, it makes this material look dimensional. Isn't that looking cool? And again, take your time. Okay. Water-based marker, again. Light pink.
Hello, Emily. Now, you don't want to run over your dots. Oh, you're so happy. You have amazing news. Your fiance's grandmother is coming up to see us and have dinner with us on Saturday night. Subway and pizza. Cool. Julie, I don't have a preference on marker. I use whatever marker is called for on the piece. For example, on this piece right here, I wouldn't use alcohol-based because this is meant to be a light airy piece now that's not to say that you can't use alcohol you sure, certainly can but that's not my preference at the moment Guys, what do you think so far? Is this something that you're comfortable with doing? Questions, comments? Hi, Darlene. Here for just a minute, coloring Easter egg cutie with Eileen on YouTube. All right. You go, girl. Darlene, you need to um, download one of my images. For my duet. And then you can be here in real time. And color it with me. Now, I don't want anybody fussing if you don't have water-based markers. Use your pencil.
Darlene, hopefully you're happy with what I've done with this project for you. Darlene was the one that asked me to do the gel pens. Uh, Darlene, I've been meaning to ask you if memory serves me, you have what, two sons and a daughter. One of your sons married a beautiful Hispanic lady and is living in Mexico. And another son is in Canada. Am I close? And you live broadcast in Canada, that's right. Oh, Canada, da 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 I know that you meant that you live in, in Canada. Am I right about the two sons and the one daughter? It's been a while. Now, you know that I've got to shave this top, right? Okay, what did I get wrong? One son, one daughter. Okay, I'm just evening out my marker here. You told me your age and you live in Canada and you're Dutch. Yep.
Thomas, I can see that you're back. We're good. Okay, here's where we are. Now, you know I'm not done with the shirt, right? The blouse. But I need to move on to my next project. What do I need to do on the blouse yet, guys? Blend in shadow. Shade and shadow, yep. You guys are making me feel good. Okay. This is where I come in with a darker pink. And this is where we need to start deciding what lays on top of what. So these two pieces right here, I'm going to go a little bit darker on either side. And that's going to make them pop forward. But I am going to put a line down the middle there. And also notice that underneath this gold piece here, I'm going to darken underneath that line and that's going to make our collar come out a little more. Accidentally got a little pink up there. Now, right next to this area here, I'm going to come in with a darker color. And that's where we have our depth coming in.
Now, the way to start this out is to darken your lines. And then at that point, again, start deciding what's on top of what. So this little piece right here, I'm darkening on either side. And that makes this come forward. This piece here, I'm going to make that come forward. And notice how I'm shading underneath that collar. I'm shadowing, actually. Let me pull out. Isn't that beautiful? And of course, don't forget to turn your pencil. And I'm going to finger blend this. Oh look, my nail polish matches her blouse. Okay. Now, I'm not going to stop in the middle of this. I'm going to keep going, but we'll get into our Disney very shortly. So notice how I'm shadowing on either side. Now, shading and shadowing happen, happen almost simultaneously. I just refer to shadowing just so that you know, especially under areas like the top of this blouse.
Any questions? All right, notice how I'm coloring in this little V? That's going to create some depth right there. And then right underneath that little frilly stuff. Mimi, is this making sense to you? Guys, if anybody have any questions, please ask. Again, that's why I'm live. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and finger blend that. Oh, what a pretty blouse. Hold on, guys. I got to help Vicky with something. Okay. Hold on, guys. All right. Now, I have one more area that we need to do. And I need to do right up on this collar. Now, you know that I'm big into details, right? So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to darken my edges of the pink collar. What a difference. All 
All right. Let me pull out. I need to change projects. So the last thing that I'm going to need to be doing is the background. I've got some add-ons and the face. And then we can put this one in the history books. Dutch, I hope you're happy with it. Okay, any questions before I change projects? Disney. Miss Sarah, good night. You can check out what I do on the Disney piece when this goes to video. All right. Let me find my page again. Sarah, before you leave, hit that like button, please. Or, as you're watching, hit the like button. Okay. Now, the way these images are done is they take the oil painting or watercolor, whichever one this is, and they trace it to create this. So by no means are you going to get an exact reproduction. Get that out of your mind right now. You can get close. But you're not going to get exact. Let me show you a for, a for example. This is the uh, mermaid tail on the original, obviously. And when they put it together on the drawing, they didn't add any detail. So we need to take care of that. All right.
Let me get my chalks. Hold on. Now, I know some of you have chalks and the eyeshadow, like I do. Just because I use, for example, eyeshadow doesn't mean that you can't use chalks. Oh, that's cool, Thomas. Thomas, did you ask your mom for help with the email? <laughs> Emily, you finally got it. And guys, you really need to get over this fear of coloring in your coloring book. It's not like it's going to blow up in your face if you make a mistake. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my blending stumps and I'm going to be using those on this area that I'm coloring. I need to clean them off. So all you do is take your little sandpaper thingy, rub it out. Well, I can do this because I can brush it off. and get that color off of there. Now, since I'm gonna use blue anyway, well, Julie, this gives you a good reason to do it now. Even though I have blue on this stump anyway, I've gotta get that pencil off of there, or that eyeshadow off of there because I want this edge clean and roughed up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my blending stump into my eyeshadow. And I'm going to start this coloring. Let me move over a little bit. Now, the neat thing about doing it this way is that it gives you basically the accuracy of almost having a pencil.
Oh, okay, Linda. I'll bring that up in a minute. And then I'm going to come in with a little darker blue. And add that to the mix. Let's take a look at the full version of this picture. Guys, this, this piece here is just a portion of a larger image. Hold on, guys. Okay, guys. Linda, that's not the right picture. That's a different one. But you get the idea. These books by Thomas Kincaid are sections of this of a larger picture. Linda said what? 11 by 14? All right. Now, I want you to notice we have a darker blue and then we have a lighter blue and then darker again and lighter. So I'm going to take my lighter blue
and I'm going to start putting in that color. Now, I'm going to move to my chalks on this one because it's got a light blue that I like. That's okay, Linda, no problem. So this is the chalk I'm gonna be using. My lighter blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently put on the color by just rubbing the chalk over the paper. And this will blend in beautifully. Okay. Now we've got another area here. Where we have the lighter blue. Notice that I'm which you'll see when I get in frame here. Notice that I'm very lightly using my chalk. And also we've got some other streaks that are very light. I'm not going to worry about those right now. I'm just going to chalk in, instead of saying pencil in that color. <laughs> All right, let me pull out. Check it out. Okay, Linda says she sent me the right picture now.
I'm going to set aside my eyeshadow for the moment. And I want you to see the two side-by-sides here. See how I'm starting to work that in? Okay. Let's see what Linda said. Okay, this is a larger version of the same picture. She's got it in 11 by 14. So same picture, but just a little bit bigger. Now, some of Thomas Kincaid's stuff, for example, in his other book, he has a huge, they have a huge image, and the image that we see in that book is just a portion of it. They divide it up into segments. But this is the full, this is the full image. Linda, are you going to color this with me? Okay, Thomas, there won't be any bleed through because this is just chalk. And the image on the other side is colored, so that's not going to make a difference at all. Okay. Now, I'm going to use my darker chalk. And at this point, you can go ahead and blend with your sponge tip applicators or your paper towel. Now, notice as I'm blending, if you push your eyeshadow out to the edge, just go ahead and push it back in.
Linda, what's wrong? Now, I'm also going to use my eyeshadow, my paper towel, to do my other areas of my blue. So this works out beautifully. Linda, what's the UG for? Now, I want you to notice that I'm using my paper towel and going over to my other light color to blend that edge. And I want to remind you that we're just putting in our background colors here. We're going to be detailing this. And here's my darker blue on that little corner. And then I'm going to come back with my light blue, my lighter blue. Now, I've put my lighter blue back in my container here. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking my paper towel and I'm rubbing it on that chalk. See how I'm doing that? Now again, if you don't have chalks or eyeshadow, you can do this with pencil. Oh, so that's why you want to do your your smaller page. Gotcha.
Okay, then I'm going to get my eraser, which is now gone somewhere. And I'm going to go ahead and erase out the eyeshadow that got on our mermaid. Now, I want you to notice how beautifully the eyeshadow. Good night, Darlene. Take care, sweetie. The eyeshadow comes off well, and if you still need to address it, just use your Tombow eraser. And if you erase too much, just go back with your paper towel and put that blue back in. I've got a skinnier eraser here. Now, no big deal because we're going to be doing our detailing. All right, let me pull out. So let's look at the two sides here. Are you guys enjoying this so far? Now, I'm going to play around with the sky a little bit. Because behind him we've got a sunset coming in which has some gold in it. So I'm going to take my gold chalk and I'm going to start putting in that sunset. Now, again, guys, we're roughing all of this in. Now, again, you can take your blender stump or your eyeshadow and blend this in. Your eyeshadow um, swabs.
Now, again, don't worry about it going over your clouds. We'll take care of that later. And then I'm going to brush that. And then I'm going to take a bright yellow. Julie, good night. Brittany, the name of this book is called The Dreams Collection by Thomas Kincaid. All right, I'm going to come in with a yellow. It's a yellowish gold. And I'm going to mix that in. Notice that I'm not covering it all the way. And then I'm going to come in with some more yellow. I'm just using my um, chalk right directly on top. Now, if you get any other color on your chalks, just take your paper towel and wipe it off. Now, I'm going to take a sponge tip applicator and I'm going to blend that in. Everybody see the different colors that we've got. And I also want you to notice that I'm taking this yellow and I'm pushing it to the left a little bit. Now, your sponge tip applicator is absolutely perfect for pushing the chalk or the eyeshadow into the paper, which is what you want. Okay, and I've got enough yellow on my applicator that I can go ahead and put it in these other areas around the boat. If you need a little more, just take your chalk, do a little rub on your paper. See how I did that?
Linda, when did that start with your eye? All right, and then I'm going to take my eraser. And I'm just going to clean up around my boat a little bit. Let me pull out. Guys, what do you think? Okay, now I'm going to put my chalks away for the moment. I hope you guys are feeling inspired by this piece. Kitty, you gonna go and get some eyeshadow? Yeah, just get just get a cheap brand that's got the most colors. Okay, now this is where it's going to get really important that you use your paper towel underneath your hand because you don't want eyeshadow all over your hand. So that's to rest your hand on. And I'm going to start detailing now. Now obviously there's more that we need to do with the sky. And I'm going to start to work on our little fish here. Now, sometimes I like to do my details first and then do things like the fish. But other times I like to balance it out. So I've started to put in my sky and my water, and now I want to go ahead and put in my fish.
Mamie, how do you like your set that you bought? Make a note to put the affiliate link of eyeshadow up at 10, 15 p.m. Sorry, I can't help you with notes on Apple Watch. Lots of colors and reasonable price. Yeah. I'll go ahead, like I said, and put that up as an affiliate link for other people to see. Okay. Now, our fish is a gold, is goldish in color. Now, we're going to have a little bit of highlight underneath the nose and on the forehead. So, I want you to notice that I'm not coloring all the way over. And I meant on top of the nose, not underneath. And I'm going to come in with a very pale yellow. Let me grab my yellow that I want. Now, why am I putting yellow on the edge of this fish? Somebody tell me. And I don't want anybody to say because the picture tells you to. <laughs> I just raced out, erased out a little bit on the cheek. And we're going to go ahead and put a little yellow on the Thank you, Maggie. That's exactly right. It reflects the sky.
Guys, check out the posting on Facebook. Like I said, I'll put that affiliate link for the eyeshadow. Okay, then I'm going to come in with a slightly darker color. Why? Because we're we're I I've done with the shading. Now I'm going to define. Check out our additional color. Isn't that cool? And if you have to come back with your yellow, that's fine. And then I'm going to color in the mouth. I've got to get a little a rid of that little pencil mark that I got. And I'm going to use a little bit of uh, red for the tongue. Oh, okay, Linda. So your your drooping started a few months ago, and then I'm going to use my Faber Castell 103, which is my ivory on those teeth. And this is why Mamie is so happy to have her Faber Castell that she got, the 103. All right, now on the eyes, blue. And this area is so tiny, I can't use different shades.
but I hit my mark. Ha. Okay. Blue hair. And then I'm going to come in with a lighter blue. I'm not going to go all the way up to the tip of the hair. Somebody tell me why. And then I'm going to come in with what? Yellow. And again, as Maggie pointed out, that's because we have what? the sunset lighting up the hair. Details, guys, details. Okay, I've got one more little light area that I wanna try and put in here. underneath that red tongue I want a light area so I need to come in with my darker skin color and put that U underneath the mouth Day trade, hi. Day trade, let me show you what we're doing. Okay. Then I've got to do my other fin here before I forget. So there's my darker blue and then my light. Day trade, you had another long day, didn't you? Okay. Let's look at my fish and the original. Not too bad. Now I'm going to add one more little enhancement here. 
Well, day trade, I'm honored that you come in to the group. I'm going to erase in a little streak in the hair. Now it got a little wider than what I wanted, so I'm just going to fix it with my pencils. Isn't that cool? And I'm going to put just a little bit of dark blue at the very top on the line. So we get a little bit of dimension there. All right, let me pull out. Here's where we are with this. I'm having too much fun with this. And day trade, this is how far I got on my little girl here. Got the greenery around the outside. Now I need to do the background, add my doodads, and readjust the face because the face looks way too pale. Guys, click that like button, please. So yeah, it's coming out well. Now remember guys, I just, you know how I always say I just pencil in color? Now I know I did this with eyeshadow, but see I'm just putting this in and we'll go ahead and detail this up. Now, I'm going to show you one other little trick here while I'm thinking about it. Um, Day Trade, do you have this book? Dreams Collection, Thomas Kincaid. And Mamie, if you end up getting both books, you can go back in my previous videos and see how I did the other pages. So these are the other pages that I've done, of course.
Okay, one last trick. So I went ahead and we did this orangey yellow sky. We have got a bright area, which is basically the sun. So I'm going to erase out this area. Now remember, we're going to be putting our clouds over that. Any other area that you want to lighten up a little bit? You can use your eraser. Everybody see how I'm getting those little streaks in there? And the effect is that lighter area makes that sun look even hotter. It's white hot. Okay, I am done. So we've got our two images here. Our Disney and our Birthmark Beauty's Jubilee. And I'm having a lot of fun with both of these. I hope you are too. Guys, click that like button, please. Two seconds. Okay, guys, calling it an evening. This is Eileen Vick for Teaching Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. Guys, joyous, joyous coloring. Day trade, glad you made it. I'm going to focus in on our little guy here. Guys, joyous, joyous coloring. Love on each other. That's what we're known for. And I hope you're having fun with this Disney project. I sure am. You know me, I like to fuss with the piece even when I'm signing off. I'm just going to clean that up just a little bit. <laughs> okay, guys, take care. Love you. You know I mean that. I don't say that lightly. And I will get that eyeshadow posted in the group. All right, guys, take care. Till tomorrow night, then. Good night, Belle. Bye.